Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. It's good to see your faces again this Sunday morning as we continue our series of teaching on connecting to his power. Today we shall be looking at what is the price of power. If you're like me, when you go to a department store or any store to purchase anything, the first thing you look look at is the price tag on the item you're trying to purchase. And when you look at an item and you look at your pocket and then you make a comparison and then you say, um, God will help me. Or you say, yes, I can afford it. And then you pay the price and then you can take the item home. If you attempt to walk away with the item without you paying the price, you're more likely to get in more trouble. Likewise, when we talk about power, when you don't understand what power is and you don't understand um, the consequence of having power or not being able to use power in the right way you're likely to fall in, into more trouble than you will uh, if you had not even attempt to have it at all so my job today is to show us um, the price of power and then give us the option to choose whether we go for it or not I'm sure that today God has a word for you. Shall we bow our heads and pray? My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for this precious word that I've gathered together at your feet to learn. Thank you, Lord, for the week that's gone by. Thank you, Lord, for preserving our lives. Our going out and coming has been blessed. Thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that we have enjoyed. My Father, I give you all the glory. Lord Jesus, I pray that the words I shall speak, O Lord, today, shall fall upon a further ground upon the house of your people, shall germinate and bring forth good fruit to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. In January, we looked at the series of teaching on vision. And um, I won't say coincidentally, um, but um, power has been defined as the ability to do work. Now, if you take your vision as work, then you can say power is the ability to fulfill your vision for the year 2014. Power is multidimensional or multifaceted, however you want to put it. I can list a few categories for your, for us to see how power um, is on display in, in our everyday life. For example, you will have power as authority i.e. the legal right for a person to carry out work. Now, a policeman standing on the road has no physical strength or power to stop a moving vehicle. But by him or her putting their hands up, the vehicle driver has to stop the vehicle or else he will run contrary to the law and then he will be fined or jailed or whatever is going to happen. Another dimension of power is supernatural enablement. When we have a supernatural enablement, we have someone like Elijah, who was a prophet, and perhaps he was in his 80s, maybe older, give or take plus or minus 10 years. And the Bible says in the books of 1 Kings 18, if you start reading from verse 44, that Elijah outran the chariot of Ahab, and Ahab was the king at that point in time. And you know the best of the best is always reserved for the king. Also, case in point, we have the man Samson. Samson was a man who was endowed with supernatural enablement that he took the jawbone of an ass and then he killed a thousand Philistines, soldiers, those who were trained to kill. Another aspect of power is influence. Now, the ability to directly or indirectly affect the decisions of others, how they think, how they, what they believe. Now, the Bible talks about a man by the name of Simon who is called the sorcerer in the land of Samaria and the Bible says he bewitched the entire city and people thought of him as a man of great power you can see that in the books of Acts chapter 8 if you read verse 9 another dimension of power is wealth 
And they talk about affluence. For example, the Lord said in the books of Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, he said, I will give you power to get wealth. Now people flex their financial muscles, especially during auction time. And they try to try to outbid one another by, you know, raising the bar. You know, wealth is the abundant supply of a desired thing. You have more than enough. Remember the Lord said in the books of Psalm 24 verse 1, that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Another dimension of power is strength. You can talk about strength as the ability to withstand pressure. You know, you are able to stand strong in the face of adversity, in the face of opposition. You are able to continue to persevere even when you have opposition to your vision. You have someone like Nehemiah, in spite of the Sambalat and Tobias of the world that tried to dissuade him, he continues steadfastly in building the walls. You have political power, you have military might, you have all kind of power. What I'm trying to get across to us is power is multidimensional. So I don't want you to just look at power from one single um, viewpoint. You know, I want you to see it from the large uh, multidimensional avenue that you can see power from. But today we are more interested in divine power. Because we understand from scriptures in the books of Psalm 66 verse 3 that through the greatness of thy power, the enemies will submit themselves unto you. For we know a great and effectual door has been opened unto us, but there are many adversaries, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. In other words, no one can fulfill destiny, no one can fulfill or take their place in life except they have power. Or else you will be a toy for the devil or a chicken in his poultry which he can kill at any point in time. Power makes the devil stand afar off from you. You see in the scriptures that whenever Jesus Christ appeared, everywhere he went, the Bible says he was doing good. In the books of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Also we are made to understand that as soon as the demons saw him, they came to bow themselves before him. You have case in point, the madman that was, that was possessed with legion of um, demons. What am I saying? Without power, you have no say, you have no voice, you have no ability to do anything. That means no matter who has prophesied over you, and let me say this also, that prophecy does not guarantee delivery. Prophecy without no power to fulfill it will just be mere words and daydreaming. So it's important that we obtain the power to fulfill the destiny. We looked at one dimension of it, which is faith. But I feel that we need to go a bit deeper into this to understand it clearly. Now, the question I believe you want to ask me is then how do I obtain power? Because you have said it in a way that we all need power and we must all go forward. And we all need to fulfill our vision or fulfill the plans that we have for the year 2014. So we need power, and how do we obtain power? Number one, I will say this, the Bible speaking in the books of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Now, I always introduce the Holy Ghost this way, first name holy. That means you must be living a holy lifestyle to be qualified for his power. The Bible also makes us understand in the books of 2 Timothy chapter 2. He said, if a man purchases himself of all these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor. And nobody puts a new wine into an old skin. That means all things must pass away. Every one of us must be genuinely born again. You must truly surrender your life unto Jesus Christ. The Bible says, to as many that has believed it, he has given power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. So until you have genuinely surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you are not qualified for his power. I know most preachers, when they close their sermon by preaching about salvation. But I want to believe that by laying the proper foundation, because there are other areas I want to touch on, that I believe that the first step for us to even obtain his power, to even think that we are qualified for his power, is that we are truly born again. We are truly his children of God. Indeed, when you are sure that you are a child of God, then it gives you the right and the authority to call upon the name of the Lord. He said in the books of Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemy. Now, if you read the scriptures carefully, you will understand that the first one that says serpent refers to the devil. 
the one that says scorpion refers to death and is the last enemy that we are going to destroy how do i know this if you read the books of first corinthians 15 if you start reading from verse 54 or 55 he said all death where is thy sting and all grave where is thy victory in other words when you have the power of the almighty god you are able to trip over serpent and scorpion in other words trip over devil devils and demons and also over death paul was too able to determine whether he stays alive or he goes that tells you how much power paul was operating in the bible says peter was operating so much power that his his shadow was healing the sick you see that in the books of Acts chapter 5 and God did extraordinary miracle through the hand of Paul, the Bible says. So, every one of us must know where our source is. For a river that forgets its source will run dry. Jesus said in the books of John chapter 15, He said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, he said, you shall ask whatever you will, it shall be done unto you. John chapter 15 verse 7. But most importantly, he said that no tree or no branch can abide by himself and be fruitful. So the first thing you must do is that you must connect to the source. If you're not truly born again, I will advise you that at the end of the service, you genuinely surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Then number two, once you are born again, you are entitled to God's power because you are now heir to his throne. The Bible says he has redeemed us out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his glory. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But most importantly, he says that as he is, so we are in this world. And we understand that everywhere Jesus Christ went, he was doing good. So you must be conscious of whom you are. That's number two, so how to obtain power. He said, ye are gods and children of the Most High. You must understand that from the scriptures, Psalms 82 verse 6. Ye are gods and children of the Most High. And there's greater, the greater one is, is inside of you than the one that's in the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. What are we saying then, ladies and gentlemen? What I'm saying is that he that is born of God overcometh the world. This is our victory, even our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. So you must be conscious of the power that you carry. Often we have been told that we should watch what we say. For he carries power. The Bible says in the books of Proverbs 18 verse 21, it says the power of life and death lies in the tongue and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Now, the way I like to illustrate this is this, is this. You see, if you imagine your life as a piece of land and the words that you speak as seeds, the Bible talks about the parable of the sower in the books of Matthew chapter 13. It says that now, if you are sowing good words you're sowing wheat onto your land if you're sowing bad words then you're sowing tears or thesis into your land now if you take a stock by yourself the amount of good words words you've spoken in comparison to the bad ones you've spoken you can tell yourself what kind of harvest to expect at the end of the year so the power of death lies in the, the power of life and death lies in the tongue so be careful how you use your tongue and I will also say this, not only be careful how you use your tongue, but don't approach your giant with your mouth closed. You see the story of David, we all read about the child of David over Goliath. But you know, as the Goliath was speaking, David also was speaking too. He was saying that your head is coming from your neck tonight. My God, whom I serve, will surely deliver me, will save me, and will give me victory over you. You see, don't approach your giant with your mouth closed. The Bible speaks in the books of Mark chapter 11 verse 23. It says, if you say to these mountains, that means if you don't say anything to the mountain, the mountain will not move. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. <laughs> we know this because it is written, and whatever is written by God is forever settled. We understand this, that we have the spirit of faith, and we know that we speak because we believe. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. So you must understand, you must have the correct perspective and the correct point of view. Have the consciousness that God, our God, has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are made to sit with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. In other words, you have the consciousness that you are from above and he that's from above is above all. You have the consciousness that you're walking in victory. You're walking in dominion. You're walking over serpent and scorpion. When you, are when you become power conscious, 
you begin to ascertain or to enforce the power that has been given unto you. So, power has been given to us as children of God. For he has said to as many that, has been, uh, that, that believe it, he has given power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. Number three, let me say this. Respect the hierarchy of power. I like the military. The military is a very um, well-organized organized, um, establishment. Um, you have within the army, you have different ranks and different people have different um, titles. Now, you have the sergeant, the colonel, the brigadier, or general, or generals. Even among generals, you have oh, three-star generals, four-star generals, five-star generals, all kind of generals. Um, in other words, there's so many hierarchy that you need to understand and the people cannot misbehave because they have to obey the order. God has set things in order and you must understand that. And you must not disrespect the hierarchy of power or else you will fall foul of what God has in place. Now, you have the story of Moses and uh, Marian and Aaron in the books of Numbers chapter 12, if you read from uh, verse 1. But let's pay attention to verse 6 and 8. So 6, 6 to 8, rather. I like the word that the Lord spoke here. He said, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet, a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in visions, and will speak unto him in dreams. But my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. And not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then you were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. He was talking to Marian and Aaron. So God established hierarchies, and he respects the hierarchies that has been set. Even among angels, there is hierarchy. For example, you hear about um, Angel Michael. The Bible talks about Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. So Michael is a chief warrior angel, an archangel, so to say. So in the world that we live in, we must also respect hierarchy if you want to be a particle of God's power. Let me share a testimony with you that was shared by the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Adeboye. Now, he said something which I found very intriguing, or a wonderful testimony, which actually testifies to what I'm saying. Now, there was a young man who was a pastor. I believe the young man was um, in his 20s or early, uh, early 20s, to, so to say. Now, he was a pastor. He was pastoring elders, those who were supposed to be advanced in age and old enough to be his father. Some of them are even had, are doubling his age. So I don't know what happened. The, there were details were not told to, told to us, but um, somehow the elders of the church gathered together and they said they were going to discipline the pastor. So they took him into a room. They all came inside. They locked the door, and one of them had the audacity to get uh, a cane. And this part of the world, corporal, um, is, corporal punishment is still acceptable. So he took the cane and they began to whip the young pastor. In the sense that they are trying to discipline him that next time he won't do that again even though he's the pastor now the testimony let me cut it short in righteousness he said every single person every single elder that was in that room and witnessed the killing of that pastor every one of them lost their his firstborn every one of them they lost their firstborn firstborn son died in other words, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The Lord is not joking with his words. He means what he says and he says what he means. I want you to take good care when you are under authority or when you, are, you have seen a system and an hierarchy in place. Don't toy with God's word for God is not toying with his word. Let me say this also to you. When you obey those who are ahead of you, those who are behind you will obey you too. Remember the Bible says in books of Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. It said, God cannot be mocked. Whatever is man sowed, he will surely reap. The way you see it is this way. You see, where the word of a king is, there is power. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. 
A colonel might not obey the words of a sergeant, but the words of a general in the mouth of a sergeant will be obeyed by a colonel. So when we have the word of God in our mouth, and then the devil will obey us, and the things that are spiritual will obey us because we have God's word in our mouth. But we ourselves must have obeyed those things ahead of us, or else we will fall foul of the rules and regulation that governs power. Let's move on. Number three, or number four, now I believe. Now we have fasting and praying how to obtain power. Now there was a story in the scripture in the books of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. Matthew 17, 21, Jesus Christ made a very profound statement. He said, How be this one went not out but by praying and fasting? This is after the disciples of Jesus Christ have struggled to. Um, cast out demons from a little boy. Now, let me say this. Jesus Christ was tempted in every single way that we were tempted. We are, we are going through temptations. He suffered obedience like man does. Like man do, rather. Every one of us go through temptation daily. We have to obey daily. Jesus Christ himself obeyed. If you remember the story in Canaan, in the books of John chapter 2, he told his mother, my time has not yet come, but he was constrained to honor his mother because the word of the Lord has said, honor your father and your mother, that you might be well with you and you might live long on the surface of the earth. Because he was trying to lay an example for others to follow, he had to obey his mother and do something about the wine that ran out. What am I saying? It's important that we understand that Jesus Christ himself had to fast. It was not because um he was he was born um the savior of the world i was fasting no he was fasting as a man you will notice that most of the time he calls himself the son of man hardly does he call himself the son of god because he was born into flesh and he took on flesh so that he can redeem you and i so fasting is to go without food and drink for a certain period of time the intention is that you spend more time um, with God, instead of the time you spend acquiring and preparing and consuming food, you spend it with God in God's presence, in prayer, in worship, in meditate on His Word. Let me also say that we should not misunderstand that fasting is not a means to punish the flesh, but an exercise to redirect our attention unto God. Fasting is not a means to lose weight. It's not a dieting plan, but it is rather to deepen our relationship with God. And the deeper our relationship with God, the stronger our connectivity to the source of power. Fasting is not to twist God's hand to get him to do what we want him to do. It is for us to align our heart to his heart so that we can do what he's saying. After all, he's Alpha and Omega. So he knows the beginning from the ending and the ending from the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, you fast for various reasons. It's not just for power. Sometimes it's to strengthen your prayer life. Sometimes it's to seek God's face. Sometimes it's to seek for deliverance or protection. It might be a way of expressing repentance and returning to God. Or humbling yourself. Or trying to minister to others. Or overcoming temptation and dedicating yourself unto the Lord. But it's important that every one of us engage in the act of fasting on a regular basis. It's not only when we are called to fast. Currently we are fasting in our church. From the um, Fe well, February 8th to the 28th, 21 days of fasting. The prayers are online already. So take advantage of that to make sure you are praying the prayer point um, daily. We shall be meeting in the evenings as well. Just to pray for maybe half an hour. To keep ourselves alive and, our, and, you know, and in check constantly. But aside that, I believe that we should all fast even in our own private time. Fasting is highly important. Now, I am not a man of God that brags, but uh, let me share one or two testimonies with you. In May, to, to, um, 2nd of May 2012, um, a man came into my office with his friend, I believe, and he carried a baby who has passed away since 2 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m. in the morning and thereabouts, the baby has passed away. They came to my office and they came in around 10 a.m. So the baby was gone. So I began to pray and I began to call upon the name of the Lord. While I was praying, the Lord told me to tell them to, tell them to go. And so I told them, I said, Lord, say, go. He said, don't be surprised if the baby rises on your way as you're going. Like a joke, the word of the prophet came to pass. 
before I came out of the bathroom, I have to wash my hands. And um, I found a man standing at my door again. I said, what is it? He said, the baby has come back to life. Now, what I did not share with many people, uh, the part of the testimony is that that year, in 2012, I began with 70 days of fasting. Not seven days of fasting, seven zero, 70 days of fasting, not 40 days, 70 days of fasting. Now, there's price for every power level you're trying to attain. If you think that's a coincidence, there was another case. I was walking towards the office and suddenly they, they ran towards me and they said, Pastor, please come. We need your help. What happened? He said, my brother slumped in the vehicle and the boy was lifeless. So I took the anointing and anointed him. I laid my hand on his chest and I prayed. Before I finished praying, the chest was beating again. By the time I got upstairs to the office, this boy has risen as has stood on his feet and said, what am I doing here? <laughs> The one who has gone, who has slumped and was gone. What am I saying to you? It's important that every one of us engage in fasting so that our spirituality can be complete. It is not optional. It is when you fast. It is not something if if you. It is not if you fast. And I pray that the Lord God of, of heaven will open your eye to see the mystery behind fasting. Let's move on to the next one as I begin to round up gradually. Now, spiritual growth is an inevitable factor of life. If you see a 30-year-old man with diapers on, it will, it will be an eyesore. Because you know at 30, you're not supposed to be wearing diapers. Therefore, it's important that every Christian grows and matured in the things of the Spirit. Because without maturity, you cannot be given access to certain levels of power. I read a scripture many years ago. And I, I love the scripture because the Lord showed me something that has made me thirsty for righteousness in growing in my faith. Now in the books of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5 and 7, the Bible says there, it said, There's an evil which I have seen under the heaven, an error which has proceeded from the ruler. I have seen servants on, upon horses and then priests walking as servants upon the earth. And the Lord said to me that day, he said, Do you know why this is? I said, No, I don't know, Lord. And then he showed me a, a scripture in the books of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. He said, Now I say that the heir, as long as is a child, different not from a servant, though he be lord of all. That means that as long as you remain a spiritual baby, you have no access to the inheritance. And one of the inheritance that you have access to or you should have access to is power. Power is dangerous in the hand of a child. The Bible said, I'm oh, sorry, the Lord said to me some years ago, let me share the testimony with you. You know, sometimes when we drive on the road, there are people who, I don't know if the devil plants them on purpose on the road that annoy us, especially on Sunday morning. Perhaps they are coming, oh, they're still coming off the hangover from the previous night. So I'm driving to church on Sunday morning. There are some people that will do things that are silly on the road, so to say. And then I'm trying to cut them up or do something. Or sometimes I will say some things that are not very Christian-like. But the Lord was actually taking notes. When I was Saturday morning, I was studying the books of John chapter 1 and I was reading verse 12. As I began to read it, <laughs> I read there and it said, Behold, I said, to as many that believe it, that give him power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. And then the Lord, uh, the Spirit of the Lord came down and began to speak unto me. And he said, Imagine your nephew, who is a baby, Imagine him carrying an AK-47 in his hands. And imagine every member of the family sitting in the living room. Imagine him shooting. Ah, say God forbid. And then he said, wait. And then imagine after he has shot everybody, suddenly he remembers that he's hungry. Then he goes to his mother and says, Mom, can I have some food, please? But Mom will not move. God forbid God and Mom has been shot dead. And then he goes to Daddy, Daddy, can I have some food, please? And then he says, Daddy will not move because Daddy has been shot dead. And then he says, Uncle, can I go? Can we, can we go outside and play? And uncle would not move because uncle has been shot dead. God forbid all of that. And then he said to me that day, he said, Power is dangerous in the hand of a child. You see, many of us have not attained the level of power that God has ordained for us. And we are not sitting in our high places because we do not have the character. We do not have the maturity to handle that level. And rather than it be a blessing, it will be a curse. So he had to withhold those things from us until we are fully matured. 
So spiritual growth is an inevitable factor of life. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of us must grow if we want to attain the level of power that we are discussing here. Let me begin to close. You see, what are the benefits of power? I believe I've discussed that, but let me share one or two things to you, with you, with you rather. When you have power, as the books of um, Psalm 66 verse 3 says, that through the greatness of thy power, the enemy shall submit, subdue, uh, submit themselves unto you. Without you having power, the enemies will toy with you. He will use you as a prey. But once you have power, then you become the predator and he becomes the prey. You see, there are some nations of the world they call superpowers. Now, no country under this heaven attempts war with them except is looking to kill, kill himself or annihilate his own citizens. For example, there's no country that will dare um, raise up a, a war threat against United States of America except that country wants to be destroyed. Or you find that the United States will not dare the Russians because they don't want to start World War III. What am I saying? When you have power, the enemies will submit themselves unto you. Every time Jesus Christ appeared, the devils came to bow themselves before him. You see, power makes us an effective Christian, an effective witness, a true ambassador of heaven. Remember, he said that to as many, sorry, rather, he said, This sign shall follow them that believe it. Mark chapter 16, verse 17, they will cast out demons. They will heal the sick. They will speak with new tongues. That's the demonstration of God's power. For he has said in the books of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20 that the kingdom of God is not in folks but in the demonstration of power. Like they say in America, they say talk is cheap. So your testimony to the world is the demonstration of power that your God is alive. After all, he has risen from the grave. And he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Let me begin to close. I'll read you one, level, one more revelation that I got from the Lord. Now, I was reading the books of Matthew chapter 28. And as I began to read it, because I've read it so many times, it's a part of me, I can almost quote it word for word. Now, if you read verse 18, it says this. It says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And I began to read on and suddenly it occurred to me that, Lord, Lord, if you have all the power in heaven and on earth, then what power does the devil have? If you have all the power in heaven and on earth. And I've always said that wherever you see the word all in the scriptures, always underline it. Because it means everything. It means complete. So if God has all the power, Jesus has all the power, then what power does the devil have to arise you? I want to challenge you today that you begin to take the bull by his horn. For you have been given power to tread over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemy. Jesus said, it said, in this world you will have troubles. The book of Isaiah says that surely they will gather. But their gathering is not unto your defeat, it's unto your victory. Because you will use them as a stepping stone to get to the next level. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take the power of God upon you. As you begin to engage in prayers and fasting in this season of our 21 days fasting and praying, let the Spirit of God begin to guide you and direct you and begin to exercise the authority that has been given unto you, the power that has been given unto you, because it cost Jesus Christ his life for him to win that for you. I leave you therefore with this scripture. To as many that has believed it, he has given power to be called the sons of God even to them that believe upon his name. Take the bold step today to exercise God's power. It is well with you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Shall we lift up our hands and magnify the Lord? Shall we be on our feet? Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. We magnify your holy name. We exalt you because you're faithful. And there's no one like you, the King of glory and the Lord of hosts. Lord, endow every one of us with power afresh. Fresh oil, O oh Lord fresh anointing, fresh power in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Show us your mystery of your word. Show us the depth of your word. My father, I pray the power that the enemy will see and run for his dear life. Release upon each and every one of us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the words I have spoken today, Lord, my father, none of them will stand against us on judgment day. Thank you, my father, for answering our prayers. I give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.